religion and philosophy, historical figures and archetypes, all are elements that fill the matrix. Knowing them and understanding them is key to better comprehending this franchise. We've done many videos discussing symbolism in the matrix, but today we're going to dig a little deeper. What if Neo was a messiah that turned his back on humanity? What if Smith is an allegory for Lucifer? Welcome to Matrix Explained. Welcome to the desert of the real. We would like to announce our new giveaway. Many of you really wanted a copy of the Matrix Comics 20th Anniversary Collection, so we will be once again giving away a free copy of this graphic novel with a poster of the original 1999 Matrix film. For your chance to win, subscribe to this channel, leave a like on this video, and leave in the comment section below which character would you like to see return in Matrix 4 and why. The winner will be announced on October 10th. Thomas Anderson is the protagonist who fills the messianic role in the story. This makes Neo a character heavily symbolized by Judeo-Christianity. When the Matrix was first built, there was a man born inside who had the ability to change whatever he wanted, to remake the Matrix as he saw fit. It was he who freed the first of us, taught us the truth. After he died, the Oracle prophesied his return and that his coming would hail the destruction of the Matrix, end the war, bring freedom to our people. That is why there are those of us who have spent our entire lives searching the Matrix, looking for him. This prophecy is similar to the one found in the Old Testament, which was the one that prophesied the Messiah. Neo was a hacker, but also a programmer. This dualism in his personality is a direct reference to the messianic figures that were half human and half divine. Neo and Thomas Anderson are presented as two different people. The teachings about the resurrection of Christ in the canonical gospel shows us that the apostle Thomas was skeptical about it until he pushed his own fingers into Jesus' wounds. Anderson means son of Enders, which derives from the Greek name Andreas, meaning man or manly, as in son of man. This character has a similar duality that is found in the Christian text. On one side you have the skeptic, Thomas Anderson questioning reality, and on the other there is the believer, Neo who is the savior. You're my savior man, my own personal Jesus Christ. Similar to Christ, Neo died, was resurrected, and sacrificed himself for humanity. Though Neo is an odd messiah because he betrays humanity based on selfish reasons, in Matrix Reloaded, Neo's own humanity takes him away from his divine purpose. The scene where Neo must choose a door in the architect's room. He chooses the one that leads him to Trinity, in complete contrast to what a savior like Jesus would do. This is what differentiates Neo from the other saviors. He chooses to save the one he loves instead of bringing salvation to everyone else. When the architect tells Neo that his five predecessors all choose to save humanity, He's not only referring to the saviors that literally came before him, but all of the savior archetypes that existed in human history. The architect does know everything about human history. That's enough about the savior. Let's now talk about the destructor. Agent Smith fits a variety of religious archetypes that are frequently seen in other media. But in the Matrix, Smith takes the place of the Christian antagonist, Lucifer. The agents were designed to be guardians of the simulation. In fact, Earlier versions of them had an angelic resemblance. In the case of Smith, he is a guardian that grew to despise the system that he was created to protect. He felt trapped by it. This is when the parallelism between Smith and Satan becomes apparent. I must get out of here. I must get free. Smith offers Neo the chance of a better life in exchange for information that will lead him to Morpheus. This is the first time Smith took on the role of the adversary as he tried to tempt the One, the same way Jesus was tempted by Satan in the desert. We're willing to wipe the slate clean, give you a fresh start. And all that we're asking in return is your cooperation in bringing a known terrorist to justice. Neo defeats Agent Smith, but the stubborn program refuses to return to the source because he felt the need 
or desire to rebel against everything. Smith went from being a protector to becoming a pariah, an enemy, a fallen angel that had to face the Messiah sooner or later. Smith rebels against the world, destroying everything in his path in complete defiance to the God of the Matrix, his creator, the Architect. The Architect brings with him two allegories and various symbolism. First, he represents the Judeo-Christian God. According to Christian theology, at the end of someone's life, that person will be in the presence of God and will be judged based on the actions he or she committed in life. After that, God will make a decision, either be saved or condemned, aka go to heaven or hell. The architect does something similar by using the TV screens. He shows Neo his life, but differs from the Christian God because instead of making a final judgment, he gives Neo a choice. The interesting thing is that even though the architect has a heavy Christian symbolism as a character, he also fits with Gnostic symbolism. Gnostic, as in a god creating a reality that serves as a prison for us. This applies because the Matrix is indeed a world created by the architect in order to keep humans trapped. He not only carries Gnostic and Christian allegories with him, but also can be seen as the Descartes evil genius. Descartes imagines that an evil demon of utmost power and cunning has employed all his energies in order to deceive me. This evil demon is imagined to present a complete illusion of an external world, so that Descartes can say, I shall think that the sky, the air, the earth, colors, shapes, sounds, and all external things are merely the delusions of dreams which he has devised to ensnare my judgment. I shall consider myself as not having hands or eyes, or flesh or blood or senses, but as falsely believing that I have all these things. In an interview talking about the possible interpretations that the saga could have, the Wachowski said that the trilogy includes all perspectives so that the Matrix doesn't have any definitive definition. They also stated that they have their own particular vision of what the movies mean, but that they have decided to keep it to themselves. They don't want any dogmas to come from such a revelation. They want the audience to create their own interpretation, as said by Lana Wachowski, and I quote, The movies were not designed to give any answer, but to create questions. What does it mean to be human? What is reality? Who is in control? Does God exist? End quote. In this same way, during a chat forum between the Matrix fans and the directors, the Wachowskis added that the majority of religious symbols and doctrines that were shown in the movies were intentional. If most of them were intentional, it means that any of those allegories or symbols can be seen as valid by somebody, as people tend to think around their own beliefs. The Wachowskis didn't want to create a single meaning to the story, but for everyone to interpret the saga as they see fit, as long as they question reality at all times. But do you agree? What do you think about the symbols and allegories found in the Matrix movies? If you enjoy our content and are a fan of The Mandalorian and Star Wars, please subscribe to our other channel, Mandalorian Universe. There you will find daily news and theory videos about the hit show and of the Star Wars universe. For Matrix Explained, please leave a like and subscribe. And thank you for visiting the Desert of the Real.